There are a few things that I like more than a good sharp hand plane. Uh, one that comes to mind is a good sharp chisel. And the third may be a good sharp saw. Now the operative word for all of this is sharp. Uh, as a hand tool woodworker, you're dealing with edge tools. Tools that you're going to have to put the edge on a, of yourself, except with the exception of some hand saws. Uh, and uh, the tool is no good if it's dull. So sharp, sharp, sharp is the operative term. This is a really junky boat anchor if it's not sharp, period. But a sharp plane is a thing of beauty. And if you're new to hand tools, I kind of want to give you a brief overview of the hand plane, the different parts of it, that kind of thing. This is a Stanley number five. It's a 5C. It's a sweetheart. C stands for corrugated. It has a corrugated bottom, which means that uh, it has these grooves in the bottom, and that was designed so that uh, it would reduce friction and help the plane slide over the wood easier. Uh, I love this plane. It's probably my favorite plane that I've ever used. Uh, most people would get recommendations to start out with a number five plane. This is a Stanley um, I think it's Handyman series. The, the blue Japanning, that's what this coloration, this paint, you would think, it's, it's baked on, I believe, but it, it's called Japanning. These are both USA made planes. This is supposed to be, be a superior plane, and it is. It's more balanced. Uh, uh, but this plane is also a favorite plane of mine. It works really well. Uh, but the thing of it is, is with a hand plane, the newer planes now that you see Lee Nelson and Veritas, uh, the Lee Valley brand, and, and others uh, that people are buying now that cost more. The, the really nice new hand planes that are out now, the reason that you pay so much more for them, first of all, they design, the designs are different, so you're going to pay for that. You're going to pay a bit for the name. But most of what you're paying for is the quality of the steel and the iron. We'll get to the iron in a moment. Uh, and uh, the quality of manufacture. In other words, with those planes, these, there's more care taken to make sure that this sole, that's what this is, is flat. And the sides of the plane are square to this sole and flat as well. Uh, and that's the cost of those planes and why, in my opinion. However, uh, I won't cover it here, but there's a process called fettling, F-E-T-T-L-I-N-G, or fettle, F-E-T-T-L-E. -E. To fettle a plane means to, in part, ensure that these surfaces are flat and square to one another. Also, there are other parts to it as well, and we're, we may get into that. But just to cover the parts of a hand plane, this is the sole. This is the mouth. This is where the uh, blade will protrude through, and this surface in front and behind, this surface, and this surface of the planer probably the most critical part of a hand plane. This, 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 and this must be coplanar with one another for the plane to operate at its best efficiency. So sole, mouth, I call this the sides. I don't know if there's another name for it, but that's what I'm calling it. 
tote handle lever cap the the uh, sides and the top or the sides and the bottom and this basic frame is the frame of the uh, plane then you got your tote your handle your lever cap this is what puts pressure on okay your lever cap let's open it up let's do this simply this is your lever cap this is your cap iron or chip breaker I have mine pulled way back away from the blade because I'm not doing I was doing heavy work not fine close-up work but back here this is the iron cap iron or chip breaker or some people will differentiate call this a cap iron and this part of the cap iron the chip breaker breaker which is probably more technically correct uh, but what happens is as this plane as the plane iron sits in and the uh, cap iron sits in the plane and it goes across the wood when the wood when this cuts the wood the wood will hit this chip breaker it's got this curve to it and it'll the shavings will go this will direct the shavings off of the iron and out of the plane into this area in here and then you would dump it when it gets full that kind of that's what I do anyway uh, but if we take this apart when you remove and replace this cap iron what you want to do is pull it back away from the edge and then turn it like that and you'll see the reason for that is if I push this forward I can damage the edge of the blade so another reason that the more expensive planes the newer more expensive planes are more expensive is the fettling process they go through uh, to fettle a plane this chip breaker this part of the chip breaker needs to lay up against the iron in such a way that there aren't any gaps so that you don't get uh, shavings and stuff trapped between the cap iron and the iron or the blade of the pool this is the cap iron this is the original Stanley cap iron that went in this this is a bevel down plane now what we mean by that is this that's your bevel and this is at about 25 degrees and unlike say a knife this works like a chisel there's only one bevel there's no other bevel there's no bevel on this side what you would do is flatten this side and then you hone a bevel into this and because you flatten this side and hone this because you have effectively basically honed both sides but you're just bringing this to flat and then you hone this you come to a sharp edge and uh, these are called bevel down plates because when I put the tool in the plane, the bevel is down. Now, this sergeant plane, for example, and you can see a good illustration of what I was talking about, about the coplanar errors. Maybe, I don't know if you can see it. But I'm flat here, flat here, I'm flat here, and I'm flat here. That's all this plane needs. But anyway, this 
it's a block plane. If I can open it up, I haven't opened it in a while. Can't get it open. <laughs> you know why, don't you? Because I'm on camera. That's right. There we go. You see that? When I took that out of there, the bevel is up. This, the difference is because this plane has a lower angle. It sits at a lower angle in that plane and there's a difference in the way it cuts because of it. Basically. But the majority of your bench planes I hold on. I'm trying to put my tool away properly. That's an oily rag, by the way. The majority of your bench planes will be beveled down. So, remember I said I got some dust and stuff in it. This is called the frog. If you look at it, it has two screws here. Some of them, like this one, for instance, has a, has a screw in the back. And I can loosen these two screws and use this screw to pull the frog forward or back. Uh, so that, uh, basically what you really want for most planing is you want the mouth, the back part of the mouth here, and the part of this frog that meets it to be perfectly level and lined up with one another so that when you lay the iron in the tool, if you see, there's no gap at all. And what that does is it supports that iron back so that there's not a lot of chatter and stuff like that. However, uh, this plane, in my opinion, I think people argue it, but I don't see any other reason why. But uh, this plane is designed so that this frog can be moved and I can close this mouth up to take really fine cuts and things like figured wood, stuff like that. So that's your frog. This is the lateral adjustment lever. This, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it raises and lowers your uh, cap iron and your iron in the plane so that you get the proper depth of cut that you desire. And uh, it's a very simple, it's plain, basically what it is. Let's put this back together real quick. Basically what this is, drop something. That's all right. Basically what this is, is a chisel in a jig pretty much. That's what it amounts to. When you put this in, what you want to do, let me, so you can see, you want this lever, lateral adjustment lever to be centered. When you put it in, you want to watch it, you don't bang it up against any part of the metal of the frame. But you put it in there. On this particular plane, you have this little hole here. It corresponds to that little piece that sits in there and that is controlled by this and it'll move forward or back and that is what moves your iron in and out of the mouth to control depth of cut.
my terminology, I'm trying to use proper terminology. I'm just an old country boy. I don't uh, care what it's called as long as it works kind of deal. So, but when you set this in, you can use this screw to tighten it up. And if you look at this, it has this little piece. I reckon it's spring steel. When you see how that that when you move this lever that puts pressure on the cap iron and the iron to help hold it in place so that it doesn't move chatter carry on that kind of deal and uh, what you what I adjust mine for is that when this is properly in the tool sometimes what you'll have to do is just kind of pull it back and wiggle it a little bit because you go to try to put that in there and it won't slide forward but what I do is I adjust this so, screw so that my uh, lever cap slides in there e and out of there easily but it gives me some resistance when I try to lock that lever down that's basically the uh, parts of a hand plane. If you watch that, you see the mouth. I've got that centered, but the blade is not square, right? I can control that. I move that lateral lever until it was. That lateral adjustment lever what that's for but those are the parts of the hand plane uh, if you're looking for hand planes I do recommend Benny Stanley Miller's Paul uh, there are some others but Stanley and Miller's Paul are probably the best quality that you'll there are find plenty of tutorials on how to fettle a hand plane I recommend uh, if your budget is tight, I recommend vintage planes. Take, bring them home, clean them up, feddle them, get them straight, square, flat, right, sharp, sharp, folks, and get to woodworking.